Ah. So, um... Right. This interface throws me off so much. It just... Something about it just really seems strange to me. Very bashful about my narcolepsy. Not narcolepsy, what the fuck are they? Uh, called mania. Narcolepsy. Jesus Christ. Jesus, this is kind of weird. Ugh. kind of odd also about the, uh... Huh? Uh... Okay. Everyone has, like, a couple of animations, otherwise they're pretty stiff. They have, like, this one kind of, like, unique animation that they just, like, have to use whenever they can. That actually wasn't obvious. Oh yeah, how's your fever? You feeling better now? Yes. I'm fine. Let me see your forehead. Uh. Uh. <laughs> Guess it really has gone down. Are you <laughs> worried about me? <laughs> Wait, why am I answering this question? I'm not him. <laughs> yeah. Yes, I am. <laughs> By the way, Jumpy? Hmm? How did you end up here? It's really bothering me that, that apparently she's going to use this nickname for him throughout the entire game, despite the fact that in any other game, I've never heard it. What do you mean? I told you earlier, didn't I? There was a man with a gas mask when you got home at night. You inhaled some white smoke and passed out. When you woke up, you were on D-Deck. Damn straight. But is that really the truth? What? Jumpy, are you hiding something from me? No, why would I? Well, if you think about it, this is awfully suspicious. I mean, why would two childhood friends bump into each other in a place like this? Hey, I could ask you the same thing. Are you hiding something? What would I hide? Well, I, I don't know. Anything. I mean, you're hiding it. How would I know? You mean, like, the number of men I've dated? 
Do you want to know? <sighs> Don't worry. Only 18. Yeah. <sighs> Time zero. Yeah, I guess I just haven't met Mr. Wright yet. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I see. Anyway, I'm not hiding anything. Just like you, Jumpy. When I woke up, I was on D-Deck. Well, you do have a point. I mean, why did Zero pick us? We haven't seen each other since elementary school. Hmm, I wonder. Look for what connects the victims. That will lead you to the culprit. Do you remember Seven saying something like that? Yeah, I do. So? Well, that's what I'm saying. I think this must all have something to do with a classmate of ours. You got any ideas who it might be? No, nothing. Oh, um... Well, if it had something to do with school, then it could be one of our teachers, or maybe the principal? Or the janitor, or the lunch lady. Oh, I can barely remember any of them. Yeah, I know. The dialogue bits in the middle of gameplay is, uh, strange. I mean, I, I mean, it makes sense, but at the same time, eh, I don't know. <laughs> I'd say the voice acting got a lot better after the uh, initial introductions, aside from fucking uh, Leo Whitefang. He still is pretty damn strange. Welp. Uh, well, I can take a couple of guesses. is bigger than I thought. <laughs> yeah, it's probably about 900 feet long. Must be one of those fancy cruise ships. Of course, it doesn't really look like a cruise ship. Everything in here is really retro. Huh. Even if it's just some sort of style choice, there's just too much. Do you remember what Zero said? <laughs> Do you think maybe this boat and the Titanic have something to do with each other? Hmm, that's a good point. It's like that movie, which we can't say the name of. I doubt he would have mentioned it if there wasn't a reason. Hmm. Do you think this boat is... If I hit up, like, while I'm at the top, it does this? Like, oops. And seriously, like, what... What am I picking here? A replica of the Titanic? A replica? Yeah, you know, like a copy of the actual boat. Who on earth would make something like that? Fans. Crazy Titanic fans. No way! Do you even know how much money that would take? No idea. 
but all they've got to do is break even, you know? Break even? Yeah, they could use it as a cruise ship. Climb aboard a piece of history, sail around the world in the resurrected Titanic. Hell, with marketing like that, they'd probably have more customers than they'd know what to do with. Do you really think people would want to ride on a ship with such an ominous past? It's the site of the worst accident in history. <sighs> Over 1,500 people died. I wouldn't be surprised if you'd get cursed just for going. A curse, huh? Jumpy, do you believe in that sort of thing? You know, curses and stuff? <laughs> Damn it, sorry. <laughs> Sorry, but I, I can't really say I believe in that kind of stuff. Uh, what about you? Nah, I, I guess that's kind of a dumb question. Hmm. Yes, I do believe in curses. In fact, I think it was a curse that sunk the Titanic. What? A curse sank the Titanic. It's because Leonardo the Catboy was on it. The curse of the Egyptian mummy. Supposedly, the Titanic carried the mummy of the priestess Amun-Ra, which was stolen from a pyramid. And they say that the mummy had a history. Everyone involved with it died mysterious deaths. Come on, I'm sure you've heard of it before. Those who open the coffin will be forever cursed. Uh, haven't you ever heard that one? Yeah, I know, I love part three. So you're saying the Titanic sunk because of that curse? That's right! <laughs> That's stupid. I don't buy it. It's true! How can you be so sure? That mummy wasn't just a normal mummy. It was really mysterious. Totally unbelievable. What is so unbelievable about it? Well, supposedly, she was really pretty. Pretty? Yes. But it, she was a mummy. That's right. She wasn't all shriveled up or rotten or anything. She almost looked alive. Oh, okay, I get it. Okay, it's that thing. I I, I don't remember the name. Uh, where your body turns into some kind of wax? Yeah? The fat in it turns into something kind of like candle wax, right? And Yes, yeah, saponification. But that's not what it was. Huh? That's not it. She wasn't wax. Then what was it? They say that she was frozen. I can't believe I got out of like an hour's worth of fucking dialogue to get back into more fucking dialogue in the middle of a balsam room. Like, seriously? Come on. What? It, frozen? If this even is a puzzle room, I'm not even 100% sure on that one. That's right. The whole body was frozen solid. You know how a human body is more than 60% water? Well, all of that water was frozen. The story says that from the time of its discovery all the way through to when it got put on the Titanic, even though it was carried through the desert, her body never melted. That's crazy. <laughs> I think so too, but maybe it's true and we just didn't know about it before. I didn't... No? Yep. Maybe it's common sense to eat shaved ice in the desert because it lasts forever. Huh? Th nah, that seems too silly to be true. But maybe it isn't. It just appears that way because you didn't know it was true. W well yeah, um... Ice that doesn't melt, even in the desert? Does, does something like that really exist? No, even if it did, it wouldn't really be ice anymore, would it? Hmm. And it would contain something really stupid, like a woman who doesn't know what a shirt is. Anyway. Um, 
I can't pick up on context clues at all. Except when it's irrelevant to the plot. Okay. Okay. Why is she the really horny one in this game? That is not what I expected. Wait, what? I don't know if I missed passed up to that or if I misread it. Might be. Might be a little impatient. Missing a lot, am I? Doesn't feel like I'm really overlooked anything. Just have to find where this key goes. There's not like a whole lot in this uh, puzzle room, that's what kind of bothers me. Like, I already feel like I've looked at every single thing in here, meaning that I've missed some small thing. Unless I have another item? Oh, I have matches! Am I just, like, terrible at puzzles today, or what? I did not expect I to be able to leave this room. Oh, what the... I honestly thought that was just the entire thing. Uh... Uh, hi. I'm glad we uh, didn't introduce ourselves or anything, just, uh, what's up?
We didn't investigate this while you were gone. I also have klepto problems. It's so dark. I can't see a damn thing. Fire. was extremely awkward in like every way. Well then let us open it with this key. seen one of those before. Ooh. We should go and investigate the candle. Certainly looks like something. Hey, Junpei, you got a minute? Hmm? I need to tell you my backstory. Here, take this. A bookmark? What is this for? Uh, do you want me to read a book? I found it in between some of the cushions on the sofa. Pretty sure it ain't gonna be any help to us, but I figured we might as well hang on to it anyway. Then why don't you hold on to it? <laughs> you know what I hate most in the world? I got four things. Hope, faith, love, and luck. Hope, faith, love, and luck? Damn straight. And you hate these things? Yeah, you got a problem with that? Uh, not really, but... What does a bookmark have to do with any of that? Well, see, each leaf on the four-leaf clover has a meaning to it, okay? And that meaning is pretty much those four words. It's like a flower language. What? 
Well, I guess it's not a flower, is it? So, leaf language, I guess? Yeah, you could call them leaf words. Leaf words. Hope, faith, love, and luck. The meaning of the leaves on a four-leaf clover. So, yeah, I want you to take it, okay? Just touching it gives me the creeps. Take the damn thing, all right? Here. All right, sure, I'll take it. Oh, man, I feel a lot better now. That thing was a real pain, you know? Do you really hate those four words that much? Yeah, well, they can all betray you, you know? Hope, faith, love, even your destiny. Well, that's not my only reason. What? Is he just wearing, like, a really long belt as, like, a scarf? That's not the only reason I hate the four-leaf clover. I just can't bring myself to like the number four. Oh, where have I heard this before? What, worried about the four horsemen? Nah, come on, man. That's just silly. Maybe back in the Dark Ages, that kind of crap scared people. But this is the 21st century, and I'm a 21st century guy. I'm a little insulted. Then why do you hate four so much? Because it's a half-assed number. <laughs> Not the best or the worst. That's why. Y what? Nine is a way better number. So what if it's last place, right? At least it's not some lame-ass middle number. What are you... You play? Play? You mean like the, the stock market? Nah, that's not what I mean. Why the hell would you think that? I mean, yeah, I do stocks too, but... You? A, a stockbroker? Yeah, got a problem with that? No, you just... you don't look like the type. Man, that stuff's just like gambling, you know? All you gotta do is bet on the winning horse. Nothing that hard about it. You sure sound pretty confident. So, uh, are you betting on winning horses? Of course I am. You remember a couple years back when the stock for Cradle Pharmaceuticals shot through the roof? Stacked a few bills over that, if I do say so myself. Uh, huh. Hey, how long are you gonna stand around wasting time? Stop screwing around. The lady has spoken. <sighs> we better get back to work before we really piss her off. I don't want her beating me up. Hey, wait! We, we weren't done! I wanted to continue that wonderful conversation. <sighs> okay, okay, I'll get back to work. Damn it. Well, that was the most bizarre thing ever. I must go look into these home invasions.
What? And also, like, I mean, how would it determine where he was standing to see the... Uh, whatever. Uh, did I see the third one, or... I don't think I did. That's a plate. <clears throat> so I take it shit in here is expensive. Straight, that's a mirror. Yeah. Yes, he is creeping you out. I came in here to look at your painting and leave. Bye! So are the, the vases, like, not important at all? I'm guessing I'm not actually a member of pattern because there's only so many ways that I could actually go in. <coughs> I say as. I'll wake and re-rotate it. Right. Uh, that looked right? Yeah. It is very obviously something. Thank you, Santa. Before. Where? 
in a book. There's a British biochemist named Sheldrake. He has a rather interesting theory. I saw this picture in his book. What's this interesting theory? Morphogenetic fields, which relies on the theory of morphic resonance. Man, I can't deal with this. Just listening to you talk about it is giving me a headache. It's not a difficult concept to grasp. In essence, he states that the shape of living organisms and their behavioral patterns are transmitted through a field not visible to the eye. Uh, what part of that isn't difficult, exactly? All right, how about this? Theory of the telepathic mechanism. Telepathy? Yes, telepathy. Well, perhaps not exactly telepathy, but it's close enough for a simple approximation. <laughs> are you serious? Telepathy? Who do you think we are? Kids from the 70s? They were the dumbest kids, obviously. I can't believe someone would actually do serious research on something like that. Yes, I agree. I read the book, but I can hardly say I understood it. I'm in no position to defend or condemn anything it said. It was probably just someone latching onto a statistical outlier from some study and turning it into a ridiculous theory. There's no scientific merit to any of it, I'm sure. But even so, I... Um... Anyway, I saw a picture like that one in his book. Hey, what do you think this picture looks like? What do you mean? Isn't it just like abstract or something like that? Something like that, yeah. Something like abstract. It's just black and white scribbles. There's no meaning there. That's it. What about you, Junpei? Does it look like anything to you? Hmm, I, I guess it looks like... Yeah, there we go. Give me all these options so I can be influenced by the options and not actually determine for myself. I see, like, an anchor? I, I don't even... I don't even... The, obviously, it looks like that. Uh, 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 Rimpa. See? I, I mean, this totally looks like one. Right here, and here. What the hell is a Funyarimpa? What, what, what do you mean, what the hell is a Funyarimpa? <laughs> you, you mean, you, you don't know? How the hell would I know? How could you not know? <laughs> that's, whew, that's practically blasphemous. Oh, oh, say you're sorry. Apologize to the Funyarimpa. Goodness, you are such a rude woman. Fucking love this guy. Junpei, are you just screwing around? <laughs> Forget it. I'm just going to tell you. This is a dog. Oh, it's a painting. See? Like this. So? So the artist was a big fan of Alice in Chains' latest work. Now we know what it's a picture of, but I, I don't see how that helps us. A TV show from Great Britain did an experiment once. They took two similar pictures. Both of them were difficult to identify, initially. But once you figured out the answer, you couldn't see it as anything else. These two pictures. The first was a woman wearing a hat. The other one, well, to make it easier. Let's just say it was this picture of a dog. So, their experiment. First, they sent the picture to other parts of the world, outside the reach of British airwaves. To Ireland, the US, Africa, Europe, etc. Then, in each country, they gathered a number of test subjects, roughly a thousand people. They were shown the two pictures and asked, What does this picture look like to you? The results weren't really interesting on their own. 9.2% of the people saw the lady in the lady picture, 3.9% saw the dog in the dog picture. Then, two days later, they aired a new program on their show. During the 30-minute show, they broadcast the dog picture and its solution. The audience was estimated to be 200,000 people. 
after the broadcast, it was a safe bet that the number of people who knew the solution to the dog picture was at least that many. After another two days passed, they gathered more research subjects from areas outside the reach of British TV and radio. This time, they only found a sample of roughly 850 people. Naturally, none of them had participated in the first test. They were, however, given the same tests and the same two pictures. The results were startling. 10% of the people saw the lady in the lady picture. The previous test sat at a 9.2% success rate. Not much of a change, statistically. The dog picture, however, produced a very different result. The percentage of people able to successfully find the dog, it went from 3.9% to 6.8%, a very significant increase. So do you understand? Do you realize the significance of this experiment? There was no way the second group could have seen the picture. They lived far away from Britain and couldn't have seen it. But even so, it was only the success rate for the dog picture that went up. Why? How did that happen? What does it mean? Oh, wait, does this have something to do with that field? Or whatever it was that you were talking about earlier? A field not visible to the eye. So, if more people know the answer, then that information will pass through the field. Hmm. Huh. I was just kidding. You really shouldn't take me seriously. Well, I mean, the things I just told you about are true. They really did happen. But the results of that experiment really aren't anything to go by. They could have easily falsified them. In the end, I'm sure they were just in it for the ratings. They are a TV station after all. Yet I fully memorize all of it for some reason. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Man, I gotta admit, you had me there for a minute. I, uh... I really thought you were serious. <laughs> of course not. Like I told you before, I'm sure it's all just pseudoscience. Uh, oh, okay, right. <laughs> <laughs> all right, enough nonsense. We've got the key. Let's get out of here. Word. Huh. A field not visible to the naked eye. Morphogenetic field. The, uh, the, uh, uh. Pay you put a key into a door. Why was this an option? I think there was more dialogue than there was an actual puzzle solving there. Huh, another hallway. Open! It's not going to open because you rattled it, you know. Damn it! Look over here! Elevators. And the buttons? Of course they don't work. The power must be out here, too. Just like by the staircase. That leaves this door. Well, looks like we don't have any choice. Yeah. Sure does. Well then, let's open it. All right, here I go. Oh, so it's a kitchen. What were you expecting? Isn't it obvious? The exit. I was hoping this would be the way out of here. <laughs> you really think it'd be that easy? Yeah, yeah, I know. Still. 
If we can just get through this door, we should come out on the other side of that grate we saw earlier. Hmm. Uh. <sighs> no good. But, uh... Anyway, uh, let's take a look. Anyway, I should probably, uh, actually narrate. Hey! What's that? Huh? Oh yeah, uh, I guess I forgot to tell you. I found this a little while ago. It's a map of the B-Deck. Let me see that. I knew it. See? Look. Yes, yes, hold your horses. What did you figure out? This is handy. See? We came in here. Now if we go out there, then we'll be on the other side of the grate. How about that? She's right. We can get out through there. There we go. Here, you can have it back. Thanks. There's a card reader on the right side of the door. And that means the key card is somewhere in here, right? That seems the most likely. All right, we know what we need to do then. Let's get moving. First off, I say we split up and look for clues. Okay. Huh, okay. Shockingly brief. But, uh... I... I don't know. Like a good mix of both, I guess. But then again, there was a lot of dialogue in the last one, so... <clears throat> what are you gonna do? I've learned a lot today. I've applied for several thousands of jobs. I just know everything. <laughs> it was like two seconds ago. that bottle of water in that one room?
Could be a hint there or something, but why? Why did? Okay. Okay. Junpei. anything, you just gotta... I can't believe you can do that. That shocks me for reasons. When I die here, I won't be blind. Oh yeah, I was gonna change the server or the Twitch thing to not say testing anymore. Oh, well. This feels dumber.
there's a lot of places to look and not a lot of things to actually get so far. out like a sore thumb, but it's not really all that special come to think of it. <laughs> You're the best. Oh, it's cold in here. I wonder fucking why. What is this place? Are you blind? It's a freezer. Oh, no way. That's way too cold for me. I'll freeze solid in seconds. Sorry, but I'm afraid I'll have to pass on this one. I'm going to leave the rest to you. Oh, whoa. It's really cold in here. Fucking no wonder. Hey, you don't need to be in here. You had a fever just a little bit ago. You should stay outside. We got this. No, I'm fine. My fever's gone now. But... Huh? <sighs> 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 no! Why did it suddenly close? Ah! The knob's frozen! But why? It looks like the pipe next to it broke, and... Hey, Lotus! You're out there, right? Open the door! What do you want? What's going on? The door won't open! Try opening it from that side, please! Oh, fine. If you say so, hold on. It's no use. It won't budge. You've got more people in there. You figure it out. Numbers make you smarter. <laughs> oh. Uh, God damn it. Uh, anyway, uh, let, let, let's find a way out. If we don't get moving, we're, we're going to be permanent residents. Two heads are better than none. I, I'm sure we'll we'll figure something out. Yeah, you're right. Let's just take a good look around this room, okay? Right. Okay. Uh. Ice is just frozen c carbon dioxide, right? Yeah, it, it is. I wonder how warm it has to get for it to, to turn back into gas again. Hell if I know. How is that going to help us anyway? Oh, well, I figured we might be able to use it to get out of here. Carbon dioxide sublimation point is negative 109 degrees. Any warmer than that, and it'll turn into gas. Any lower, and it becomes a solid. Oh, how do you know that? <laughs> Despite my looks, I'm the clean... <laughs> the queen of random knowledge. What? Huh? Looks bad to mess up when you're showing off. <laughs> oh, you're so cold your mouth's going numb? Yes, that's right. You're just doing that on purpose, aren't you? Come on, guys. Don't you think that's... Kind of weird. I wonder why it doesn't turn into a liquid first.
Wait, what? I know and how the hell is that gonna help us get out of here wait why would it be you Ugh. we don't have time for this crap oh, but it can turn into a liquid oh, carbon dioxide turns to liquid if you put it under high enough pressure this isn't really a good time for a chat about science but I was wondering the same thing wondering what oh. Wondering why carbon dioxide doesn't turn into a liquid unless it's under pressure. Right? It just seems weird. Water's a liquid between 32 degrees and 212 degrees. I know this. So why isn't that the case for carbon dioxide? H2O and CO2 are pretty similar. No, they're not. They're totally different substances. Look, guys, if we keep this up, we're just going to freeze to death. You good with that? You want to die talking about sublimation and gases? Because I sure as hell don't. Now let's get back to work. Assuming you don't want to end up like a pair of ice sculptures. Oh, but Jumpy... There's a kind of ice that doesn't turn into liquid when it goes above 32 degrees. I heard about it. Its melting point is 96 degrees. Ice with a melting point of 96 degrees? You mean there's water that freezes at 96 degrees? Yeah, well, you could also look at it as ice that won't melt until it's 96 degrees. Hey, that was the thing. <laughs> so what's this ice with a melting point of 96 degrees called? I heard it's called Ice 9. Ice 9? Originally, Ice-9 was a made-up substance invented by a science fiction author. Ugh. But recently, scientists have discovered that such a substance actually exists. Lucky guess. Wait, hold up. So is this thing called Ice-9, or is it water? Like I said, if the ice is over 96 degrees, it'll be liquid. If it's under that, it'll solidify. So, you could think of it as a polymorph of H2O. Here, think of it like diamonds and graphite. They're both made of carbon, right? But depending on the structure of the crystallization, oh, the hardness and structure are completely different. So you're saying normal water and this Ice-9 are like that? Yup. Have you heard the story about the crystallization of glycerin? For 150 years after the discovery of glycerin, people cooled it, warmed it. Played it on their radios, got sick of it. They did all sorts of things to it. But whatever they did, it never crystallized. However, one day in 1920, some glycerin on its way to England by ship was discovered to have crystallized during the trip. Scientists around the world wanted to research this new, crystallized form of glycerin and asked for seeds. Oh, a seed is a sample of the original crystallized substance. With a seed crystal, further crystallization of glycerin would be easy. However, something very strange happened. Not only did the glycerin encouraged by seed crystals begin to crystallize, even the samples nearby did, even though they were tightly sealed. And it didn't end there. After that day, it doesn't matter where in the world it is, all glycerin crystallizes naturally when cooled to less than 64 degrees. Before that day, no matter how glycerin was cooled, it refused to crystallize. But once the crystallization had begun, it was almost like... how do I put it? It was almost like all the glycerin in the world was communicating. Communicating in some way that we can't sense. And now it's happening everywhere. Wow, that's, that's pretty interesting. But, uh, what does that have to do with Ice-9? What she's saying is that it's a lot like Ice-9. What happened, I mean? A lot like? Oh, that would be bad. If water everywhere started freezing at 96 degrees, man, it'd be the end of the world. <sighs> I 
At any rate, we're not gonna have to worry about the end of the world unless we can get out of here pretty damn quick. All right, guys, I think that's enough of that. I didn't think we'd get quite this far off topic. I mean, I know I'm kind of at fault here, but we can't be screwing around anymore. Also, we've died. So seriously, I might go by the name Santa right now, but I didn't grow up in Iceland. I freaking hate the cold. So let's get cracking, all right? We gotta find a way out of here. Selfish, isn't he? Ice Nine is interesting and all, but we can discuss it more once we get out of this freezer. Okay. I'm so, so just realizing how late it is, so I will try to find a good stopping point. Also, yeah, that was the weirdest place to go into a tangent. Cynic tear. What? Oh, I'm missing here. Oh, this. That's what I'm missing. Insightful. This puzzle's a little weird for me. <laughs> Delicious donut. Uh, I beat it smaller with the chicken. Oh. 
Put water into the bottle with dry ice. And make sure the lid's closed. No, I, I did not expect that. I very clearly didn't understand what we were working with. Now I just have to put this makeshift bomb on the doorknob. I understand it now, though. I, I just... a little slow on the uptake right now. Alright, that's set. So, uh, what do we do now? We have definitely MacGyvered together something like we're like, playing fucking Trapped or something, though. We just need to give it a little, uh, tap. The bottle's already about to pop. If we just throw a rock or something at it, it'll go off all on its own. A small rock? Huh. A small rock. Alright, this ought to do the trick. Throw the chicken at it. Ah, some dry ice, huh? Not a bad idea. All right, guys, stand back. Actually, we should probably hide somewhere. Where exactly do you expect us to hide, genius? There isn't really anywhere big enough. Yeah, there is. Look, right here. We can hide in there. Come on, get inside, quick. All right, here I go. Was that all that just to explain that how they wouldn't get killed by this thing, or...? Three, four... Five! You're counting the wrong way! Oh, oops. <laughs> that is a really sad excuse for a joke, man. Sorry, dude. Alright, for real this time. You guys ready? Yes, whenever you're ready. Just throw the damn thing. Alright, here I go. Three, two, one. door is it gone yeah it's gone the blast must have shattered it well no shit yes all right let's see if it opens hooray we're out move oh god damn it oh, no, 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 no. fuck well you did just grab the grill what did you think would happen hey where's lotus Oh, welcome back. I was starting to get tired of waiting for you guys. What were you doing? What do you mean, what was I doing? I was waiting. We were gonna die! Oh, yeah? But you didn't. So everything worked out all right, didn't it? But, what the hell? <laughs> Just kidding. It might not look like it, but I was really worried. Oh, don't give me that crap! I'm telling the truth. I mean, if you died, then I'd be in trouble, too. If you died, then I'd be stuck here, and I'd die, too. See? Uh. I did all I could. I even looked around to see if there was anything I could use to pry open the door. But I couldn't find anything. So, all I could do was wait. I mean, what else did you want me to do? Call the cops? You guys did sit there for like an hour talking about fucking hydrogen or whatever. Fine. But there's one thing I have to ask you. What's that? You didn't close the door, did you? What? You think I closed the door on you? Why would I do something like that? It closed on its own. I told you before, if you die, then I die too. Yeah, I guess so. If she really wanted to kill us, all she had to do was bar the door from the outside. But she didn't. Well, she didn't do anything. She's only lazy, or negligent at least. Not an attempted murderer. Well, um, I'm sorry. I'm sorry I doubted you. Hmm? Oh, yes, well that's alright. As long as you understand. Hey, no more screwing around, you two! <laughs> I don't know what it is about the using the number two instead of the word two. I, I just kind of picked up on that. Break time's over. Especially for you, lady. You've just been sitting on that fat ass of yours while we were freezing to death. How rude. I was plenty busy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> How about you put all that energy into something besides bitching? Let's go. Man, everyone in this game is much ruder. <laughs> it's just... Oh, so after all that adventure, we got some pork. Uh, 
Um, yeah. I thought I had this equipped. So damn weird. We'll be able to use it while it's like this. It's futile. Futile? You know, a waste, useless, pointless. Oh. Um, uh, any particular reason you wanted to bring that up? Oh, no reason, really. I was just thinking about futility. Huh? Why were you thinking about futility? Well, it has something to do with the Titanic. The Titanic? Yep. Have you ever heard the story that the sinking of the Titanic was predicted? Oh, God. No, I, I haven't. What is it? In 1892, 14 years before the Titanic sank, a novel was published. It was called Futility. It was written by an American novelist named Morgan Robertson. The story was about a big cruise ship colliding with an iceberg and sinking. Of course, if that was the only similarity, there wouldn't be any reason to mention it. It wasn't, though. The name of the ship, its nationality, course, departure time, size, displacement, maximum speed, number of passengers and crew, the number of lifeboats, even the location of the accident itself, and the cause, and the location of the damage. Everything matches the Titanic almost exactly. It was almost as if he'd seen the whole thing happen. But this book was written 14 years before the Titanic sank. Hmm. But that's not all. It wasn't just futility that predicted the sinking of the Titanic. There were two other similar stories written by a man named William Thomas Stead. Both of them before the accident. One in 1886, and one in 1892. Stead wrote two stories that had striking similarities to the Titanic disaster. In one, two ships collided. Many of the passengers died because there weren't enough lifeboats. In the other, a ship collided with an iceberg and sank. Hmm, I don't know. I mean, I'll give you that it seems a little weird, but... I'm pretty sure it wasn't too uncommon for ships to hit icebergs back in the day, or even other ships. Right, I knew you'd say that. Hmm? But, what if Stead had some sort of special powers? To be more specific, 
What if he had the ability to do automatic writing? What? Uh, automatic writing? Wait, are you... Is this this predictive text generator you've been talking about? Are you talking about when someone's possessed by a spirit and then they, they write a bunch of stuff without knowing what they're writing? Yes. What do you mean, yes? That stuff's a load of bull. Okay, let's say, hypothetically, that automatic writing isn't a total load. These guys still couldn't have predicted the sinking of the Titanic. When this Stead dude wrote his thing, nobody had died on the Titanic yet. So if automatic writing is about being possessed by dead people, who the hell possessed him so he could write that stuff? That's not it. What's not it? Stead wasn't possessed by a spirit. He was doing the possessing. Oh. Hmm. What are you smoking? William Thomas Stead was a passenger on the Titanic. <laughs> she looked at a knife. In the seventh. He just wrote down what he saw with his own eyes 20 years before it happened. Um. Well, uh, <laughs> well, uh, why, why don't we talk about this some other time, okay? Huh? But... Come on, let's get back to it. Let's, uh, not spend the entirety of the nine hours talking about things that don't matter, except they actually do! listening to this rambly nonsense. I also probably will cut off the recording and the stream before we get out of this room. Uh, just since, you know, once we actually get out, there's going to be probably like an hour's worth of dialogue. Or like five minutes worth of dialogue. I can't tell, you know? It's impossible. Thing. They don't like to let me put in a number. of numbers, a pad that I can't actually put numbers into. That one was 
narrated for some reason. Or, like, pseudo narrated. And I have no idea. I'm guessing none of those have anything. Less of this is me actually solving puzzles and more so me just finding random things. Stick the knife in it. Oh, that's. God, this perspective throws me off like crazy. I cannot figure out where I am at any given time. Ah. What am I missing? up to or do I have to figure it out myself? I think maybe that would be a good time to call it. Uh, I don't know what else is in here, but uh, it's not like we have anything to really lose at this point. So. I still haven't figured out how this interface works. Is it all one save file or... Yes, but uh, for everyone who's still here, uh, thank you for joining me. Um, this game is very interesting. I'm very glad that uh, we've gotten started on this. And uh, we'll see what's behind these silver Mario blocks another time, I guess. But uh, until then, I will talk to y'all later. <laughs>